We're officially calling the meeting to order. I just heard uh, Chandler hit the record button. So uh, obviously this is a, a recorded meeting. So we're starting the meeting officially now. And you'll do minutes and something later, Mark, or is that what you want to do? Oh, let's do it now. Uh, anybody have any uh, discussion regarding the minutes? Any deletions, additions? Look for a motion. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay, Rob uh, seconds at all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody Aye. opposed? No. Okay, thank you. We'll go on then, Tim. Okay. All right, uh, so the Facebook page is pretty much ready to launch whenever everyone else is ready. Uh, Tim and David and I met, we created the profile that it's going to be based on. It's just uh, an economic development profile. It's not anything that needs to be posted on, so it's nothing to worry about. It's literally just a launching page so that we have it connected to the page because that's one of the things you need with Facebook to start a page. Uh, so that's all started. I have the bio, everything that needs to go into the page when it started are all there. I have, I think I counted it yesterday, it was 11 posts already drafted. And since we're on a once a week posting schedule, and we're also going to supplement in articles when those are appropriate and uh, like news that happens, it happens that week, we wanna post it that week. Uh, what I have drafted can all be pushed back week when that happens. So right now we just have an 11, uh, post buffer in case something doesn't happen that week or there's nothing really to post about uh, that's news today. Um, the other thing with engagement, uh, we have to get outreach, we are going to post in the forums. I have two Wallingford forums that I personally am a part of uh, and our plan for those is I have a message drafted up that's basically going to be posted from my personal account saying that we have an economic development uh, Facebook page. This is in general what it's going to post about. You should follow it. And then there's going to be a link to the page in that. And that way we get a very wide reach of Wallingford residents following. And then the other prong of outreach is going to be to hand follow. So I'm gonna go through and follow cities uh, like Brantford, and I'm gonna follow like state organizations uh, so the BioCT, um, the Coxes, I'm going to follow them because that way they will see us and they can then follow us in return, or we can at least get updates on what's happening with them. So Brenda, are you, uh, can you share your, your screen and, and show everybody the, the Facebook page and the first message? Yeah. Let me just make sure that's... So what you're looking at now is just the beginning of the content calendar. This first quotation bubble is going to be the introductory post. We're going to post that right after starting the page. That way, when we do outreach to get people to follow, they aren't seeing a blank page. They are seeing that there's content already there. Uh, and that way they know we're actually alive. Um, and then the post below is just what I have drafted up to put into these two Wallingford community forums. Uh, from what I can tell, they're the two most populated ones and the two most active ones. And then the first message that goes out, um, we had looked at it the other day. Now you got the art from Lynn and all that stuff, can you? Yeah, I got the picture of Town Hall from Lynn. Yeah, can you share that? Yeah, that's just gonna be over in the email. So that would be, this um so i did want to ask did you want this what i was thinking is this would be used as like the not the profile picture but the background part of the profile picture so the long rectangular part on the facebook page Correct. is that what your intentions were with this picture as well yes okay yeah courtesy of joe mayor of photography by the way for those committee members <laughs> Oh. Okay, so uh, Brenna, just briefly, um, if you would just go through our target audience with uh, with Facebook, small business versus large business, et cetera. Yeah, so our target audience is kind of just a mix of all Wallingford residents, 
we do want to target individuals uh, so that they know what's happening. And also that's just a good way to build a larger following because they're just gonna be more residents. Um, we want small businesses within Wallingford or who might be uh, good candidates to move to Wallingford. So if we, if Tim says, oh, there are these businesses, they might be looking to move to Wallingford, we will go with the Facebook page and try to target and follow them. And that way they can see what we're doing and possibly have more of an inkling to move to Wallingford. Uh, same with large businesses, specific targeting. With large businesses, Facebook isn't as much going to be about connecting with them. Um, they, large businesses don't tend to actually look through their Facebook feeds. So therefore being something that they follow isn't going to help us as much, but it can still help us show up uh, in searches that they do and it is still just a good way to show like look we have these businesses that Wallingford is interested in if anyone if a small business is looking to move to Wallingford something they might do is look through who is following us and if they see these large businesses that will help them have a positive outlook on what businesses are part of Wallingford. Very good. So you had mentioned briefly that uh, part of the objective of being on Facebook, albeit a smaller, typically individual means of communication as opposed to corporate communication, is going to help in our small business endeavors. Um, yeah. It's really targeted towards, you know, as we'd say locally, you know, filling Center Street, although we know we have lots of small businesses mm -hmm. throughout the community, uh, but that's the target audience. It's more community based, it's more, you know, light, you know, friendly type of uh, banter. Um, yeah. We have set up a, an account so that um, um, so that this it's one way communication. We're not, you know, we, we're not opening up the, the gate on the other side. So just out of out of frankly concern, or let's let's just get our, our feet wet and get started. Um, and then of course, you know, good Facebook activity is going to help drive, um, you know, it, it SEO and help drive traffic to the website. Could you just talk about that for a sec? Yeah. So. SEO works by having more keywords somewhere and more of your website links somewhere. So having the website link will be on the Facebook page permanently in one spot. There's a spot to have uh, website links. It'll permanently be there as well as in the tagline of some of our Facebook posts if they are worded as to direct to the website. So that way it'll drive web traffic. So people will see the website link. It'll be available. It will be in more places. So when people search for Wallingford or business places to move to in Connecticut, Wallingford is more likely to pop up because we have way more of an internet presence. Um, same with web traffic driving. Because our website is going to be in more places, it's a lot more likely to be clicked on by someone. So um, again, small business outreach effort. Um, um, it, every, as, as all of these initiatives are designed to do, it'll drive more traffic to the website. When we drive more traffic to the website, uh, we're going to be measuring, you know, leads through the through the website. Um, we'll get to Sam in a minute. And Sam, I don't see um, Callum on the call, so I hope you're you yeah. can carry the ball for us there. Um, uh, but it, it's uh, I think Brenna has done a, a remarkable job getting things set up, um, getting you know, messaging done ahead of time. Again, no message goes out until we approve each message. So we'll have the opportunity to do that together. Um, at least Brenna and I, if, if it pleases the committee. Um, uh, and I think we're looking, are we not looking for a nod from the committee, Brenna, to throw the switch and go? Uh, yeah, we're basically just making sure everyone is okay with what we have planned. And then I will meet with Tim and David and we will set up the page together just to make sure everything is okay that's actually going on to the page. Tim, I'm on board with it. I'm on board with it as well. Great. You know, Brenda, um, if you would share, you, you, you've done some great research. By the way, um, as all of the, the uh, channel uh, leads have, uh, Brenda had submitted her justification statement as to why we should be even on Facebook as a, as a you know, municipality. What are the what are the upsides? Who's doing it? She's done some nice research. Share it, just an anecdote about you know another town that you've put in your report that um, is using Facebook 
and why they found it valuable. Yeah, so the other town I really talked to was Billerica, Massachusetts. They use their Facebook page much differently than we have planned for ours. They post almost daily. Uh, it's not specifically for economic development, but they do post economic development type news. Uh, I think the biggest reason that I saw talking to him as like, a, oh, we really should start this. They actually started their Facebook page because of economic development. Uh, they were trying to revamp their town center. It was going to a public vote and the public, there's just so much misinformation going around with the public uh, that they needed a way to quickly disseminate the right information into the public um, and to reach the widest majority of people. And so they decided to start a Facebook page with that. Um, and they've just continued it ever since. Uh, talking to him, I did talk about why they don't specifically do just economic development news. And that's because with the frequency that they post, they just wouldn't have enough to, to talk about because they post so frequently. Um, but talking to him, he said that our plans seemed pretty solid. He thinks that with a less frequent posting uh, schedule, we won't run out of information, um, especially supplementing news articles with uh, just like facts about the town. Very good. Um, if, uh, if we're finished with, with Brenna, if, uh, I would go on to the email, just giving the Callum a little bit more time to come on if that's into your schedule. Yeah, I can go. Um, can I go one second, Shay, before we jump? So Brenna, okay. are we all set? Yeah, I think we're all good. Okay, all right. Um, just had a, I just um, I just want to remind the committee that in each of these channels, all right, they are specifically labeled Wallingford Economic Development. We don't anybody think that this is a Wallingford community Facebook page. It's an economic development Facebook page. It's an economic development LinkedIn page, that type of thing. So just just know that we've specifically ordered it so that in our travels around town, if someone says, oh, you know, it's the town's page, it's not the town's page, it's the economic development page. So I want to make sure we made that distinction. Brenna, excellent job. Okay. Very good job. Um, so our plan with the email marketing, um, so our plan is to send it out first to existing businesses that we already have their emails and then included in our message, we're going to have, um, it say like pass on the message, like help out Wallingford basically, um, to get them and like encourage them to pass on the message to people they would know, um, if we're sending it to brokers, maybe they would send it to their clients. Um, so kind of just having in the message that we're sending to pass it along in order to expand our reach. Um, and then, so I got access to the email, uh, what's it called? MailChimp. Um, and Not Mail Monkey. I know, I always call it Mail Monkey, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so I got access to the MailChimp. So I've kind of been playing around with that. Um, originally, I had made the email campaign on um, Canva, which turns it into just a PDF where I could have sent it out on that. But Tim, I haven't told you this, but I've actually been playing around with the um, MailChimp. And I think that it would be better to um, convert the stuff that I have on the old one into this one, just because the way that this sends it out is way more professional and like if I sent it out as a PDF they would have to click onto the PDF whereas this once they click on the email it would just be there um, so I've basically just converted everything that I had on the old email to this one um, just for like convenience I guess when people are opening it um, so it's still not like completely done but I've been working on changing it from that old one to the new one um but once i have that done we should be able to send out the first email within the next couple of weeks um or with probably by next week that's good you you had a sample yesterday of, of uh a recent yeah video. if you want i can show that but it's not the yeah. one that i'm sending anymore but i can show you like what i have i guess so far for um the one that I will be sending out. It's not like done, but this is kind of what it would look like. Oops. Uh, 
Um, I don't know how to make it. Sorry. Um, so it's on the left. So that's like the message that we kind of talked about, Tim, how you wanted to say, um, just kind of explain like what we're doing and how we're like improving our email marketing and to send the message along. Right. And then those are the facts from the website. Um, we've got to, we've got to work on those. Just there's a couple of facts we've got to change. That's yeah, Calum. Yeah, I because I asked Calum for the link and he said that we might be changing some of them. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very much. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so. Yeah, but um, I'm going to be adding more. But that's kind of just like what we have for the start of it. Great. So let me just uh, jump in, if I may. So um, we have had the ability um, in this office to send out emails to. Uh, good morning, Callum. Good morning. Hello. Don't exactly look like you're in the in the cold weather climate. No, I'm in quite a hot climate right now. <laughs> um, so we've had the ability to send emails out through this office uh, through a tool called MailChimp. Um, so Lynn does that periodically, um, but it's relatively infrequent. So our, our goal here is to take an increased frequency without taking and you know becoming a, a nuisance. But for example, in today's newspaper, all right, big story about um, Masonic Care, which is a you know local uh, facility uh, known statewide. Some significant efforts that they've made in terms of providing food to the, the uh, Connecticut Food Bank. I'd be inclined to say, hey, maybe we take and, and, and send that out to our business contacts on, on um, uh, you know through our email because we've got our email list broken down into you know businesses, vendors, government officials, et cetera. That's a database that we maintain here and have built here in this office. So we can we can send a message like that out, you know, congratulating Masonic here and giving them a little bit of you know brand exposure. Um, so there's there's opportunities to do things. So sometimes they're that they're that quick. I was, you know something happens in today's newspaper, we say let's get something out. So I think now uh, we will have the ability to do that on a much more frequent uh, basis. So, Tim, Tim uh, would you be encouraged to have us give you names? Like, I can give you a ton of them from the Rotary Club, for instance, who own businesses uh, who may not who, who may not be participating now, but you're, or you may not be sending to them now, but you will in the future if I give you those lists. But is that what you're encouraging us to do? Okay, good. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one thing that we've learned through this whole COVID crisis is that um, uh, we we have we we have 400 and some odd people on the list, but we've got you know we've got 2,000 businesses in Wallingford. So not only do we we have a we have a good list, but I sit here and say, well, yeah, we, we, there's more people we don't have than than we do, because frankly, in in my tenure here, I've never really had that much of a reason to, to email some of the you know smaller businesses. In today's day and age, I've got all the reason to email to the smaller businesses, but I don't know who the, you know the re, I don't know their email addresses, et cetera. So, yeah, I, th I think now is an opportunity to, to build and make it a focus to build that database even stronger. So we're going to merge our databases with WCI as well. Um, or sometimes I'll send something to her and say, consider sending this out to you know people on your email list. But um, yeah, I think it's now now that we've got you know a, a channel and a strategy that's more established. And we have a process that we can, um, it's it just it's just more fluid. Uh, you know, right now sending one out through the office frankly becomes, all right, do you have time to do it today? If not today, can we get it done tomorrow? If not, and it just becomes, it's clunky. So uh, hopefully this this takes and um, smooths it out nicely. Any further uh, questions from the committee regarding email? Anything else to add, Shay? No, oh, that was it. Yeah, in, in your justification report, um, again, uh, well done, well written. Um, uh, there, there's some statistics in that report based on Shay's research that, that show that email marketing is, is still one of the most effective tools. So to take and, and make sure that that's part of our, our, uh, our quiver, I think is, is pretty important and it'll prove, to, it'll prove itself hopefully. 
And once again, directing people back, everything will have some a link to the website. Those that are not familiar with us, hopefully we'll go to the website, drive that traffic, and hopefully, you know, again, measure through lead generation, so. Uh, Patricia, I'm not sure if you're trying to adjust your volume or you had a question. No, no, I'm just, when you see my, I'm on my phone, so okay. I'm, I'm just adjusting, constantly adjusting this thing. No problem, I just said okay. no. Thank you for asking though. Are we all set on email then, Tim? I think so, Shay, very nice job. Okay, uh, since Callum's on, why don't we, and, and we have him for that long distance, why don't we, uh, along with Sam, present the website? Okay, so since last time we had implemented those changes that we talked about, and there hasn't really been um, any new updates to that, but I know Callum was talking with Web Solutions and Lynn, so about the actual implementation process. Um, and did yeah. you share the screen again? Um, sure, I can, I can share it. Uh, so since last time, um, I've met with, uh, with both Tim and Lynn, and uh, they spoke with Web Solutions about actually implementing the changes to the website. And so um, from what I've heard, it sounds like they're actually getting started on implementing it uh, right away. And so they were reaching out last I heard and asking for all of the copy and text format. And so I just got that to them. And so I think now they're just getting started on implementing the changes. But um, I'm pulling up the, the site right now, but I don't think we've made any significant changes since the last time. Yeah, and everything that we update about is on that um, the Google Doc that you ended up sharing with Web Solutions, so they have the updated notes. Yeah. Can you share your screen, Callum, just to... Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think there's been any updates to the actual uh, copy on the website since last time, but we've we've reorganized the statistics, and so we've moved the at-a-glance statistics to the top, and so they're visible um, right when you click onto the page. And then we've also added um, several other statistics here. So we've got a section of, of four statistic blocks, uh, which all have new information that we've added. And the statistics that we came up with were uh, a collaboration with, with Tim and uh, with Samantha. And so we've been working on adding this stuff, but um, yeah. I mean, I think that, so the last time we all met as a group was quite a while ago, right? So um, since then, I think we also found all, of, Samantha found all of these testimonials from different business owners. And um, I'll share a link to view the, the page in the, in the chat as well. So everyone can see on the side, there's a number of comments which have all of the different uh, testimonials, which are uh, really, really high quality testimonials from a number of prominent business owners in Longford. Let's just run through those, Cal. I think those testimonials, uh, uh, just, just through the name, so. Sure, so we have one from uh, Patrice Rigland, who is the general manager at Radio USA. We have one from Gary Papiano, who's the CEO of um, Atlas North America. We have one from Bruce uh, Dwarak, who is the CEO of Hobson Mozart. And we have one from uh, Mark Dukos, who is the president of uh, Century Commercial. He's also, the, he's also the president of SIOR International right now. Yeah, and I feel like we, we kind of touched on that and how that um, added to the credibility of it. And I know that there was discussion about wanting to incorporate more messaging towards brokers and the, the middlemen in, in finding uh, real estate for these businesses. And I think that that kind of covers that part. Right. You did a great job, Sam, getting these quotes together. And 
um, you know, these are, these are some power players in this town, not only in industry, but uh, certainly you know, Mark Duclo in the, in the commercial real estate marketplace. The functionality of, of these uh, testimonials will be that they will rotate on the site, which is something that we've got uh, Web Solutions working on now. Um, but then go ahead. I just wanted to you know, focus and bring some additional attention to the testimonials, Kellen. I think that's pretty much it for the updates that are new since we all last spoke, because I, I remember going through some of the FAQs and we fine tuned those. Um. So um, I guess, can one of you speak about the um, uh, the SEO and, you know, why why we've made the changes to the site that we've made? I will say that, again, for the committee's edification, uh, the you know the styling of the site of us this this is our plug into Wallingford page which obviously you can get to get through in a variety of ways but the styling of the site did not change it's still very much from a style perspective in sync with the rest of the website um, we didn't want to you know make drastic changes that don't you know look styly uh, stylishly different than the rest of the town's website um, the functionality is very different and Callum if you can speak to the not, it's not just the factual information which you've just gone through, but, but why did we decide uh, to make the changes that we made? What, what is it going to do for us? So going from the, the current landing page to this landing page, we're adding a lot of new text. And so just from a, a strictly, um, I mean, beneficial standpoint, having more text is, is a lot better. Uh, and typically best practices are having for a web page for SEO is having between a thousand to two thousand words. And so we added more more text, which is more helpful information, but we also made this landing page a better entry into the EDC section of the website. And so the page better represents all of the other content that's hidden behind other pages. And generally the more steps that it takes someone the more clicks it takes someone to do something, the less likely they are to do it. And so everything we've done has been to help optimize the drop-off rate and the percentage that someone's actually gonna continue through and click onto another page and follow through with um, hopefully getting in contact with, with Tim. Um, in addition, we also, we had an FAQ, which is directly, um, which is in direct response to potential questions that people might have when they're going through the necessary process of looking to establish a business. And so by coming up with potential questions that people might have, we're increasing the odds that the website and this page specifically would appear in the search results for those types of questions. And so in general, everything we've done from an SEO standpoint has been to help increase the chances of us appearing in search results while also making the site more helpful and more useful to people that are already on that uh, that journey. And something I want to reiterate is that this landing page um, is like the first intermediary in a digital audience to build the relationship with the town of Wallingford. So it's important that the first glance of it is compelling and they're interested in reading more and it's actually information that's relevant to the decision making process, which we were able to pull different facts from the existing marketing materials that Wallingford has and just rearranging them in a more compelling way, kind of driving them toward that end of the funnel in the sales process. And um, having an updated landing page supports all of the other um, marketing initiatives that you're doing online with social media and LinkedIn. And if you link them back to a, an optimized landing page, they're more likely to actually kind of follow through on the end goal. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate also, we had we had a really high drop-off rate from the amount of people that were coming to the existing landing page and then clicking off the website entirely. And so the more we can get that down, the, the higher likelihood those people are actually continuing through um, and, and uh, getting in contact. And the website's also starting to be a, a hub for people that through our outreach are coming back to and getting more information about what incentives there are to establishing businesses. Very well done. I, I will add that uh, the screen that you've got shown right now, if you could leave it there, you'll see that in the left margin and the right margin in that presentation, there's a lot of white space. 
So it was it was our preference to take and, and just spread that a little bit, uh, elongate it both left and right. Uh, there are design tools that we as a client of Web Solutions have at our disposal to go in and make adjustments to the site. Callum had studied those and uh, you know uh, worked through Web Solutions to determine you know what he could do and couldn't do. Um, and bottom line is it has nothing to do with his talents, which are very you know, very high. Uh, but the the webs we needed to engage Web Solutions, which we'll talk about after the uh, students leave the room, uh, leave the meeting. Uh, as part of our other agenda items, but we needed to engage them uh, in order to take and, and make the uh, site even a little bit more appealing by, by stretching the uh, the text out a little bit, which um, as a vendor or as a client, we do not have the ability to do. Um, client, uh, Callum certainly has the ability, but the Web Solutions relationship does not enable him to have the tools to do it. So we had to engage Web Solutions to, to do some of this stuff. So. Um, but as Sam said, you know, this, this is, everything is aiming to the website. And, and I will use a real live example. Um, yesterday, I got a call from, it's a national company that is uh, actively negotiating a lease in Wallingford. And they um, wound up on our website and they ended up giving me a call. The reason being that, you know, they said all the information that we're looking for was not on your website. And I just want the community to, to uh, You'll be reminded that we are quite deliberately not putting every single tidbit of information on the website. What we're trying to do is, is sell Wallingford to the point where we say, if you have an interest, you know, email Tim, call Tim, call the office, so that we can establish that, 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 that dialogue, which is essentially important. In this particular case, this company was concerned as to whether their use was going to be allowed in the zone that they're negotiating the lease. I just, I don't think it's in our best interest to have anybody like that trying to wade through our zoning regulations to figure that out. Um, and we've used Radial as a perfect example. If they had done that, they wouldn't be here right now because the zoning regulations clearly say that their use is not allowed in the zone that they, they're currently in. But we were able to take and make some amendments, the regulations based on their use to, to get them in. So this is all directed towards getting the uh, the um, the visitor to a point or a conversation like you know email electronic or otherwise begins and and then off we go so um i think yesterday's example is is a perfect one and i think it'll only get better and of course all this energy will generate more open so good stuff I, Tim, I, just I, may, I may have missed it but when are we looking for a launch on this uh, we should have pages back from Web Solutions by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we just engaged them. Um, it was, I think it was last week. Yeah, we, we, we Callum, um, um, Sam and I met on the phone. I think it was last week or the week before. But uh, anyway, um, we should we should have it by the end of the month. Super. Thank you. Oh, I have a quick question. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, I was wondering. I wanted to ask. Uh, I wanted to ask the uh, the students. Do you find it difficult to get back to the economic development uh, page when you go further into the site? Do you think there's ease in finding your way back or do you think you get? I think it's simple and straightforward just going on like the side, but maybe the someone who has limited time and rushing through it, he might or she might not be able to like spend enough time looking through the website. Yeah, and I, I'm on the website right now with the tab bar at the top, uh, the business drop down is almost all linking back to the economic development information, which I think kind of covers okay. that. So I don't know. That's where they stay. Okay. Okay, because I moved into other locations and then tried to get back there. But yeah, you're right. If business is where they're going to be, then it'll be easy to find their way back. Any further questions or comments regarding the website? Uh, just to add, Mark, that uh, not only the content that's been you know massaged a little bit, um, um, or as Samantha puts it, and I like the word she used, it's been synthesized. So um, is but so but the order of the presentation we think is somewhat intuitive to follow. So we give them some our best statistics right up front. Um, you know, it's it's the forty percent. 
savings on electricity. Uh, 20 minutes is, is uh, are it, it commuting, you know, it's workforce related. And then the five hubs say we, we've got very organized and well laid out industrial parks. Hopefully from there, they watch the video. And then, you know, I can't see the rest at this point, but, but there, it scrolls down to uh, other things that um, just know that we gave, gave great thought to sequence uh, when we put the, the information uh, together. Uh, just from a design perspective, um, you know, my two cents, I, I think it really flows nicely um, in everything. It, people look for the video. So in your home screen, you're actually able to see just a, a portion of it. So, you know, there's a video there, which is always 90 percent of the time going to get you a click. Um, the question I have about the just from a infrastructure piece that all the um, all the quotes, those are all good quotes and they show up as, as Callum's quotes. Is, is that gonna be the final design or, I, I, I guess I don't understand why Callum is the owner of, of some of those. Uh, I'm not the, so I, I made the comments just to uh, have all of the testimonials be here on the side and be present on the page. But um, if you see, I mean, we're crediting the uh, the people that said them on the yeah. beneath the quote, and so it's just to have it there and to be next to the to the website rather than it being credited to me. So will I'm they? Certainly not the owner of the yeah of the testimonials. Yeah. It just it just confused me. Will, will they be down uh, down here in these in, in, in this what's on the center of my page now? Yeah, so okay. all of the all the testimonials are going to be in the slider here. Okay. And so you'll see that there's a space for the, the yep. name of the person that's being credited for the testimonial and the Got company it. that they work for. But okay. um, they'll be on a slider here that, that uh, we'll be playing. Great. I also forgot to mention earlier that I've been um, emailing back and forth with Todd Langston, so he should be working on another quote, and we'll have another one soon. Perfect. Now, just for clarity, that may be creating a little bit of confusion. The screenshot that we see right now does show the, the all of the quotes on the right rail. When you're on the website, that right rail will not be there. No, oh, yeah. So this is this is just a, a prototype, and it's a static image. So, for example, none of these links work either, and it's just meant to represent how the design will and the structure of the page will work. Great. Other questions or comments? Well, well, Sam and Callum, thank you very much on that. Uh, why don't we go on to LinkedIn? Hello, everyone. Um, for LinkedIn, we've been working hard, um, Jack, Shay, and I, on creating the page. So here is the page from what we're going to be posting on. I have um, a bank of about four posts, which are all longer form posts that have more information. Um, they're more like article based, I, I assume, than maybe the Instagram and the Facebook. And um, our target audience for this page would be primarily SIOR and CCIM um, uh, like workers and they, uh, real estate brokers and they are we're going to be targeting to have a more narrow focus we're going to be targeting them in select states um and so we think that the linkedin profile um unlike the facebook profile will be for specifically for um the the real estate broker the commercial real estate brokers so that they can continually see updated information on wallingford and the uh, business scene and any relevant information um businesses and their employees they're like brenna said they're not going to be checking linkedin on a business account that often but it would be beneficial to have like the businesses in the town following the site for their own in information, like getting information from the EDC and us like knowing who's in the town and, and. <clears throat> um, like to use sales and navigator 
which is a platform that helps you, um, it generates, helps you generate leads. So it's kind of like a Google where you can type in, I want um, this geographic area with this seniority level and in this industry, and it'll bring up people to, um, to like uh, reach out to. And so you have, um, you could look up the C I R S I R S I O R um, users and the S I O R brokers, and they then you could reach out to them and start developing a connection so that um, when they're thinking about relocating a business, Wallingford is again on the top of the mind awareness for. Um, the towns that they like to typically locate people in. Frank Hurd said that Wallingford was an easy sell. So um, if they, if Wallingford is on the top of their mind, then, and it makes them money, um, then they're going to be more likely to send them over to us. Any questions? Okay, you want to expand upon that? Expand upon um, what specifically? I asked Shay if she wanted to jump in. I can, um, yeah, so basically we've just been kind of coming up with posts. Um, we wanted to um, kind of gain a lot of more followers before we started to post things. Um, so once we had like the overview and the profile set up, mm -hmm. we started messaging people from Tim's account um, because he has like over 400 connections. Um, so I was messaging people yesterday um just like inviting them to follow the page um and we were able to gain 78 followers is what i'm looking at right now so um i probably messaged about like 200 people yesterday so that's a pretty good ratio i would say 78 out of the 200 if maybe people haven't seen it yet or um whatever but so we've kind of just been working on followers um building followers and then once we have all of that we just wanted the page to look more legitimate look um like it was like reliable um so once we have that we'll begin to use the sales navigator and then with the sales navigator we're able to target like the certain people we want and you can find like similar um if you find a target that you really like or somebody that fits your profile really well, you can create different, um, there's like buttons and you could find like the same exact people, but, or not same exact people, but same people with the same description. Um, so that way you can target those kinds of people. But yeah, so we're just kind of working on um, using the sales navigator to target people and that way we can message them directly. So, and you also have the uh, opportunity to uh, invite people who are not your connections uh, to follow your page. I think I think with Sales Navigator you could do that twenty times a month. So you should take full advantage of those because otherwise, if they're not a a connection of yours, you can't ask them to to follow if you don't have Sales Navigator. This one, one of the features of it that oh, I use okay. all the time. Yeah, that helps. I don't think that we realize that but we could definitely use that um and we could reach out to people to ask them to follow so thank you jay what is your optimum number before you're ready to launch how many followers do you want to build up to before you actually hit the road with this um i think that like there's not really like even with 78 followers it's not like it's not a lot but it's definitely not like a number where you're like oh wow like they have no followers i think even with may maybe our goal could be like a hundred mm -hmm. um and then we could launch but i even think we could start posting with the 78 we have now i just think we didn't want to have like zero to ten followers when we started posting um yeah but i, I think, think it, and i was gonna say and, and that it's kind of new 
you know, there's not going to be an expectation that you have thousands and thousands of followers. And as you do hit some milestones, they're good little content posts. Hey, there's, you know, we're, we're up to 500 kind of a thing. And, you know, it just gives you something to talk about. Mm -hmm. And even when we start posting, um, if people are sharing, we'll, our followers will still be growing, hopefully. Um, so once we start posting, that'll like, we'll still be gaining followers, hopefully by even just posting might help us gain followers. So if I may, um, I just want to uh, thank Anthony for um, giving us a tutorial on um, Sales Navigator several weeks ago. Um, it's something that uh, we've, we've engaged and uh, it's going to cost us a, a couple of bucks. I think it's 80 bucks a month, Chandler. Um, um, if you pay monthly, it's, yeah, 80 bucks. It's 79.99. Yeah. So, um, and what we're, our, our plan is to do that right through May. And then just, yeah, as we're going, we reevaluate. And, you know, as we've said, as a committee, uh, we're committed through May on this project uh, and, and see where it takes us. And if we're happy, we keep going. If we're not, we've got at least a sundown opportunity. So uh, rather than pay for a year subscription to Sales Navigator, we decided to, it's a couple bucks more a month to go monthly, but we decided to do it uh, that way. So, and you also get a free month, so if okay. that accounts for anything. Yeah. So thank you for your guidance, Anthony. We truly appreciate that. And we're not done tapping you on the shoulder either, so. Uh, Happy to help. Stay <laughs> tuned. Um, so I think, uh, let's see, I think we're, we're, um, we're good to go. It's like anything else, there's, there's, uh, there's complicators in there. Because so I've had, a, I've had a personal LinkedIn account for quite some time with 400 and some odd followers. So I use it you know, strictly for business, but um, you know, beyond Wallingford Economic Development, there's other business interests I'm involved in. So it pulls people from other areas into my account. So what we need to do is transition that over to a Wallingford, um, uh, Wallingford LinkedIn account. And uh, that's in process. And then you heard me, those of you who are on the call a little bit early, you heard me say to Shay that uh, her efforts are working because I've got now a a bevy of uh, 80 some odd responses I've got to respond to from people that we've asked to, you know, follow our Wallingford page. So um, uh, there's some work uh, ahead of me there. So uh, I think we're I think we're in a good place. Uh, we we have looked at LinkedIn and said this is the medium, this is the channel that we are going to be reaching out to the the medium to larger size businesses, uh, as opposed to the Facebook, Instagram, etc. So. Um, we've uh, we've got three people working on this. We initially talked about a, a paid LinkedIn versus an unpaid LinkedIn. Um, so we're just we're going with this uh, model where we're we're going to be you know subscribing to the uh, um, Sales Navigator and just using one channel. So we've we've gathered the three students into the one channel. So. Um, John is or Jack's not on the call today. He's working, but um, he has done some yeoman's work on um, developing uh, clients. And so we're going to be continuing to work diligently on, on building the base uh, through LinkedIn um, with um, what we said is frequency of, you know, one message a week is our is our goal. So. So Chandler, Shay, anything else to add? Not off the top of my head, no. No. Right, Jim, right. I've got a question uh, similar to my email question. Not fully aware or know that much about LinkedIn. What is our ask of the commission or anyone else that we meet? If they have a LinkedIn account, do we ask them to start bringing their friends in from LinkedIn? Or how, how's, how does this work? Uh, or or do, do you not want us to do that? I can. I can. Not Anybody? There's no requirement, but if you'd like to, it obviously helps. Okay, so we want to try to as many contacts as we possibly can from our own LinkedIn account, I guess is the way of describing it. Yeah. yeah, if yeah. it's beneficial to them, and obviously they'll figure it out when they decide whether or not to follow us. Yeah, if you wanted like to post on LinkedIn or something, you could just be like, Oh, like, by the way, like we created this account, like if you wanted to go follow instead of like, because it, it takes them to follow us. It doesn't like it's not like a connection. Okay. Um, so it's it's basically they have to do the action. So if you wanted to like 
post or any of you, even if maybe you could wait till we first post it and share the post that way so your LinkedIn connections would see it, that maybe would be something you could do. Great, thank you. I would, I would chime in on that too, that uh, anything that uh, we post on the EDC uh, LinkedIn page, um, commissioners, you know, everybody that we all know uh, involved with the town who has LinkedIn should like and share it. It's it's basically electronic word of mouth, and that you, you just think of how that kind of spider webs out. Everyone in your contact list, everyone in everyone's contact list will suddenly have this, and that just you know it, it increases your chances of somebody liking your post or sharing your post. Um, you know. It, some of the some of the content that you put out there if it's if it's relevant to you know someone i know who might be in an industry or or that that content would be relevant to them you know a lot of times you know you want to share that content with somebody hey you know kind of check this out sort of thing and and that's really what you want to see happen with anything you put out there you want people to like it it's an acknowledgement that it's valuable content or share it it's valuable enough that you know, you're a thought leader on whatever that subject is, and they will share that uh, into the into the business community. So that's your, it's just really, like I said, it's your electronic word of mouth. Hey, Anthony. Hi, this is Rob. Uh, hey, I have a question because you know I'm not a, I'm not a currently a big user of LinkedIn, um, as certainly as you are. I understand the benefits. Certainly, I always struggle with relevancy, mm -hmm. and so just I know a lot of people will build up. Lit names and lists just for the sake of building up lists and names. Um, but how would you, how would you differentiate between those people that you'd want? Would you generally have to find a particular relevance for their business or would you, man, where do you draw that line? How do you, I'm sure you've had to go through this argument internally. Yeah. Where do you draw that line? How do you decide of the say 500 people that might be on your list? Mine is much less than that. Of course, um, how do you decide really who, 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 who's relevant and who's not? You know, I, you know, if I look at my own personal case, and my use of LinkedIn and, and the number of contacts that I have uh, and who those contacts were at different points in my life, depending on the company I was with or the industry I was in, um, you know, the, the relevance is really going to be germane to that, you know, that period of time. So not all are going to fit what I'm currently doing as a result, as it, would uh, relate here, I think you have a much broader base um, depend, you know, if they are business people, depending on where they are, uh, you know, you, you selectively uh, decide who you would share the, the content with. And um, so I, I think it's going to be kind of a case by case basis. This is something that needs management and, and ownership. Um, I think Tim, in, in your role, um, you know, having the sales navigator, it, it allows you to really, um, focus on on who and what you know you have the ability to go in and, and Chandler I know you've you've done some of the searches you can see how finite um, you can use that tool to identify you very fairly specifically who you're going after what industry what person what title um, so so you know I'm not sure if I answered your question Rob but you know I think it's it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis and as you look at your your uh, your list of potentials to share it with, you know those who would be potential candidates for considering, you know, Wallingford as a as a place to do business. Yeah, no, Anthony, thank you for that explanation. That does give some at least some uh, credibility to um, really managing this properly. Uh, so I'm not just sending out arbitrarily. So that's good. That was good information. Thank you. One thing oh, to add. I had Okay, John. One thing to add, if the page isn't relevant to me and my needs, then I wouldn't necessarily follow. So the just by nature of a social media page, it would uh, weed out the relevant and unrelevant people. Okay, in the interest of time, are we all set with this, Tim? I think we are. Chandler, Shay, we good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Well done again. So, <laughs> so we are re we we are ready to launch, and we're not gonna don't go hit the uh, the send button yet. But uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit. Uh, we'll set something up within the next day or so, before the end of the week. 
so that we can uh, get back on on, uh, on track and figure out a launch day. Okay, Good next, next we have the Instagram. I'm going to interrupt, just to say I am. I have to head to another meeting at uh, nine o'clock. So, uh, so far, everyone, the work that you guys are presenting is, yeah, the work you are presenting is really awesome looking. And uh, I am excited to see what the end product is um, and how much success this all garners. And also, um, it, I realize it's getting towards the end of the month. So, I think I have all of your Venmo information. So, I should be sending you guys your $250 in the very near future. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys all later. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, David, before you jump, um, I just I just want to say to the committee that um, as this entire team is you know, on holiday right now in between semesters, um, we have not been the least bit shy about meeting. I don't think there's been a week we haven't met at least three times uh, yep. since our last <laughs> meeting. Um, so, And I'm sensitive to the fact that we have been pulling people out of working around your work schedules and pulling people out of other family situations. Uh, uh, David, you, you've been an absolute yeoman about making yourself available throughout the day. Well, again, it, this is this is your in-between period, your vacation, so to speak. So, um, and I think a testament to the commitment to this entire team is certainly that no matter where they are, and I'm looking at your picture right now, Cal, <laughs> no matter where they are, uh, they're, they're, they're jumping on uh, if in, in at all possible. So I, I can't I can't thank you guys enough for your level of engagement. That's pretty awesome stuff. Cool. You guys have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll talk to you soon. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, Instagram. Okay, so um, I spoke with Tim the other day. Um, we haven't gotten through um, putting all the nitty gritty, like creating the account and all that stuff together. Um, so I'm going to be meeting with him uh, a little bit later this week. And then from there, we're going to work on all that stuff. And then um, from there, I'll have a more uh, further report and stuff for you guys. Super. So, yeah, Mark, I just want to, John, is uh, I, I've asked for his indulgements and, and a little bit of his forgiveness. Based on the other things that we've been juggling, I've just said, John, this is only so many balls that uh, this old guy can keep in the air at one time. So bear with me. We're going to get to the Instagram thing once we've gotten these other things to a point where we're ready to launch. So um, know that that he's been ready, willing, and able, and it's been me that have, have uh, it's been kind of put the the temporary breaks on Instagram until we can just find the time to get it done uh, well. So thanks no for problem. your intelligence, John. Yeah, of course, no problem. Thanks, John. Okay, Brennan, you got college outreach. Yeah, so I'm going to go through this uh, college by college. I reached out to six different colleges. I have solid reports back from three of them. Uh, two of them I need to reach out to again as follow-ups. They never responded to me. And Wesley and I had a meeting set up with, then she had to cancel, and then she never responded to my let's make another meeting time. So I need to also reach out to her again. Uh, but the three colleges I for sure heard back from and have had extensive talks with are Quinnipiac, Albertus Magnus, and Southern Connecticut State. Uh, starting with Quinnipiac, uh, for their uh, like job postings, so every college tends to have a site where they post jobs for their students. Uh, the two platforms that are used are called Handshake and Simplicity. Quinnipiac uses Simplicity, uh, however they call it QUCC, which is like Quinnipiac University Career Center or something like that, um, which is what they use as a job board to post. So I am in the process of drafting up a email that is going to go out to all our business contacts that will explain Simplicity and Handshake and how to get started on them so that businesses can start posting on those job postings, which will uh, more directly connect them with college students. Um, Simplicity works, it has a free version and a paid version. You can pay to be a premium employer user, uh, which basically just gives you a couple more um, features that aren't necessary, but help you kind of narrow down uh, who sees your post or how they apply to your post. Uh, so it's not at all necessary. Uh, so that can be a free thing for businesses to use. Quinnipiac is holding a virtual career fair February 24th. 
Um, they're using it through QUCC. So I'm still working on getting all the information about that and how employers can apply to that uh, from uh, Jill Kohler, who runs their career center. Um, and once I have that, that will get sent out so that businesses who want to participate in that career fair can. Um, I also reached out to uh, a faculty member at Quinnipiac who runs a student outreach organization that uh, that organization tends to work with businesses um, on projects that they want student help on. I reached out to that professor on Monday. I have yet to hear back from her, but it's also the week before classes start, so she is probably very busy. So I will follow up uh, sometime next week if I still don't hear back from her. Um, that's pretty much everything with Quinnipiac. The biggest thing for them is simplicity and then getting businesses to use simplicity uh, to post their jobs and internships. Um, the next school that also uses simplicity is Southern Connecticut State. Um, they also use simplicity, so it's very similar to Quinnipiac. Um, from what I can tell, and it's not very clear if this is how it works, but this is how it seems to work through their website. Once you have a Simplicity uh, employer profile, you can choose which colleges to post your job postings to. So you will, uh, you'll create an employer profile, you will create a job posting or internship posting, and then you can select what schools, uh, the schools have to be using Simplicity, but you can select which schools that job posting goes out to. So you could select Quinnipiac and SCSU, and then those two schools, their students will see that job posting. Or if for some reason you only wanted Quinnipiac students to see the job posting, you could just select Quinnipiac and those students only would see that job posting. This way you can kind of narrow it down. You don't get applications from people who are over in California. Uh, so you're really narrowing down the pool of people. Um, Simplicity isn't used as much as Handshake, which is the other platform. So what I'm doing in the email I'm creating is pushing Handshake a little bit harder than Simplicity because Handshake has a lot wider reach in Connecticut. Um, the other thing with SCSU is I reached out to them about uh, business and classroom partnerships. And they what they wanted was to know they want to do it backwards from what I thought. So what I was thinking was they would reach out to their faculty, see which faculty were interested. We would get back, oh, this school wants uh, web design uh, business connections. We would reach out to businesses with web design connections and then connect them to each other. What SCSU wants is the other way around. They want us to figure out what businesses want to work with students. And then we would tell uh, the school we have uh, opportunities with businesses who work in HR or in supply chain, and then they would find those faculty. So they want it a little backwards. Um, I'm not sure if that's something we can work on for this semester. I think it might be, it's not necessarily too late because it could be something they work on later in the semester, but definitely something to think about for the fall semester. Um, the last school that I'm going to talk about is Albertus Magnus. I've communicated the most with them. They are uh, very much in touch and they're very, very friendly. They use Handshake, which is the main platform I really wanna push for businesses to use. It's completely free. Um, they don't have a paid version of it from what I can tell. So all the features you get are free. Um, Albertus Magnus uses it, Wesleyan uses it, and I'm pretty sure Sacred Heart and Yukon also use it. So a lot of big schools in Connecticut use it. Um, the way Handshake works, similar to Simplicity, you create an employer profile, you then create your job posting, and then you then select schools that use Handshake that you want to see your job posting to. So you would select uh, Albertus Magnus, Yukon, and then maybe you don't want Sacred Heart kids to see it, so you don't post Sacred Heart. So you can do that as well. Um, so it works very similar to Simplicity. From what I can tell, they're a lot more forward with how you can use it. Their website was a lot more um, straightforward. So uh, definitely pushing Handshake more so. Um, Albertus Magnus is looking into having a career fair through Handshake, so it would be virtual. They don't have a date yet. They still don't really know how it would work. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back on if they decide to do it or if they're 
just not going to have one due to COVID. Uh, they do have an HR professor who is interested in class to business connections. I have reached out to Tim about that. So we are going to look to see if we can find a business who has HR scenarios that they would be willing to work with students on. Um, and they also said if businesses want to reach out to them for student connections, that's also something they'd be willing to do. So similar to SCSU, if we had businesses reach out to us and be like, oh, we would love to work with some students on uh, supply chain stuff, we would then say, okay, let's contact uh, Albertus Magnus and they will reach out to their supply chain faculty and then we will have connections that way. Uh, so they're kind of open to both ways of doing it. Great work, Brenna. So you can, I hope everybody can see how this is all going to tie in. I mean, I can already envision a message. This is all workforce development related, right? The number one um, driver of businesses to a location is, you know, access to workforce. So this whole college outreach is our way of trying to show everybody that's here now and everybody who may potentially come is that we can help them continually develop their workforce through our, our direct connections with the colleges and universities in the area. But I can, I can envision a, a message going out on LinkedIn, on Facebook, um, you know, Instagram, once we get that going, just introducing our present companies and potential future companies to the fact that we are this engaged in, in helping them develop workforce, which is a very, very strong and important message. So, Brenda, you've done a great job uh, researching that and with great energy, you've got that ball rolling quite well. So. And for everybody's edification, as we are on the preface of launching these other channels, um, Brenna has launched already and is already getting uh, feedback. Um, so great job. Is there anything any further, Brenna? Um, not really. I'm planning to have the general email to send out to all the businesses about handshake simplicity and just the uh, business to classroom connections. Um, I have a rough draft of that. I need to go through it a couple more times. I hope to have that to you by Monday so that we can send that out next week. That's great. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, I'll just jump in on that as somebody who, you know, struggles to find certain areas of talent from time to time. That That is fantastic. And I'm just sitting here thinking about, you know, tying this in somehow to um, like some of the work that Hubcap does. And if you look at that, and, and that is a uh, a, uh, a resource, an EDC type resource that the employers would look at, where you have almost a, a main line into some of the colleges and universities for talent. I mean, that's I don't think anybody's doing that. That's really that's really innovative. I think that's great work. Thanks. Further questions or comments? Mark, I think that wraps up the presentations from uh, uh, the student group. Okay, Callum, are you still on? Because I want to make a recommendation to you. Yes, I'm still on. You're still on. Okay, you're 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 in Cape Town, one of my most favorite cities in the world. I understand. Yeah. I'm I'm jealous because the weather looks absolutely fabulous. A little typically windy there, and it, I can see it's windy there now. But very windy, yeah. I went. I went into my notes the, uh, last night, hearing that you were in Cape Town, and I encourage you to go to three restaurants. One is the Greenhouse. <laughs> One's the Greenhouse. The other one is Fins F Y N S, and the other one is the Chef's Warehouse. All very good food, all very reasonably priced, and they have great wine. Of course, there's always great wine in South Africa, but anyway, enjoy uh, your trip. Alcohol is actually illegal at the moment, but I'm sure the food's also very good. Oh, they won't allow alcohol because of COVID? Yeah. Oh, oh well. well, the food, I'm sure, is still great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll give them a try. Thank you. Okay, no problem. What, what uh, time of day is it there, Callum? What? What's up? What time, of, what time of day is it there? It's uh four four ten. Four ten. Very good. Okay, we'll excuse then the students and uh, if the rest of the committee could stay on, we'd appreciate it. Fabulous job, team. Well done. Excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good job, guys. One second. I have to assign a host. Okay.
We good, Mark? I'm set, Tim. Okay. The other, the next item on the agenda um, is the Hubcap Pipeline Sign Sponsorship. We we did this last year. Um, it's at a cost of five hundred dollars. It is um, obviously to support the uh, uh, the efforts of Hubcap and, and their employment pipelines. But this is in essence a sign that we have in the Hubcap um, just from the Wallingford Economic Development Commission. So. Um, it is an annual sponsorship, and um, it is uh, my recommendation that we continue it, but because it's a expenditure that would come through the marketing committee, um, I would open it up for discussion, I guess. I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to sponsor it. Okay, and a second. second. Rob, okay. Discussion now. Any thoughts or comments one way or the other? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Tim. Sorry, guys. The next thing uh, we had discussed some time ago, a letterhead revision, and the letterhead has been revised and reprinted. I just wanted to hold up a copy for you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Um, just felt obligated to close that loop, so we've got new letterhead. Um, I just want to give a brief update on the landing page. Uh, so for the plug in the Wallingford website, you had heard me make reference to the fact that we didn't need to engage web solutions to make the, uh, the final changes. Um, that did come at a cost. Uh, we have a, a contract with them to make the changes. It's going to cost us 3000 bucks. Um, didn't um, didn't have much of a choice, frankly, because uh, we could not make the changes given the tools that they give to their clients. <laughs> Even with someone as talented as Callum, um, he dug in and said, "Well, but I can't do this. I can't do this. They don't allow me to do this." They don't. So, and we met with Callum uh, and Web Solutions to may have that conversation. So, uh, we need to engage them to to uh, to make the changes. So, and I I don't think that's a bad thing at this juncture. Um, you know, it wasn't mentioned today, but Callum is going to be dropping off the team because he's no longer a student at Quinnipiac, um, and he's he's choosing to take and, and uh, he's launched his own web development business, uh, and he's very actively engaged with uh, in doing that. Um, he told me that from his uh, buddy's house in South Africa, he is actually working um, every day and, and and you know doing his job, which is pretty cool that he can do it from there, um, but. You know, when we're making changes to the site, I think it's probably it's, it's in our best interest to make sure that the the um, the company that we have a contract with, in this case, Web Solutions, is the only one in there touching things and moving things around. Especially, you know, if Callum was to make changes, then and he's gone, and there's an issue with a change. What are we going to do, right? So, um, although three thousand was a bit uh, hard to swallow, I think it's. Uh, it's fair given the changes that uh, that they're going to make. So I just wanted to make sure that you were. Tim, do we have a certain amount of changes that they do make a year for us? I forget what was in the contract. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't believe so. I think what they've done is they give us the tools to make the changes, and Lynn does most of the changes. But the okay. designs we're talking about are well beyond uh, what the you know what the tools allow. So hey, hey, Tim. Oh, go ahead. Uh, somebody want to ask a question? Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I was going to say. Uh, you know, I. I I know, and they used to host our website here, and what they have is it's a, I guess, kind of a modified version of WordPress. They have their own language, uh, which makes it hard. If this site was written in WordPress, anybody who knows WordPress could configure it out. I, I, I think you need a certain level of talent, but I, I think because it's a bespoke uh, language that it's written in that they don't let anybody in the back end. I don't know if there's any way to convert what you have to WordPress and then anybody could write it, write in it or in, in, and change it. Uh, but that's really the hang up. So as long as that is the case, you're beholden to them to make the changes. What's it called? Go on. Yeah, I was going to add to that. I'm building the website for the for Waka. And um, I've had a couple of people, I paid a very modest amount, a couple hundred dollars to one uh, a couple of people to use WordPress. <clears throat> and uh, I had some other couple of people work on it as well. And to be honest with you, I'm going to learn WordPress myself uh, because it's just, uh, it's a lot easier for me to make the changes 
means I have to go through a week or two of just learning some of the basics. But to Anthony's point, um, I'm not sure who in Wallingford makes these decisions, um, but it just, and I don't know what advantages their particular language alteration may offer versus the standard WordPress, but there is a tremendous amount of resources out there at a much, much reduced and economic um, cost to utilize WordPress, which is used by thousands and th tens of thousands of websites. So um, again, I, I, I don't know the specific reasons, but uh, I think the, the message is that mm, there's probably a much more economic way of, of doing this in the future. Um, and, and it gives us a lot more flexibility as well, to be quite honest with you, if we can convert it to strictly to WordPress. Yes. So. I work a lot with WordPress and WordPress gets hacked pretty easily. Sites go down and crash pretty easily. Um, especially if you have posts and stuff coming in uh, or you'd have to shut all that down. Um, so security is really, security would really be my, the main issue with whoever would be hired. Yeah, I, I think that if you look at the majority of, of sites today, I mean, it's pretty much all WordPress. Yep. Um, you know, so I, I, we, you'd have to investigate a little bit more on what the, uh, you know, what benefits there are to uh, to the to the language uh, that they do use. I just, you know, it was a it was a showstopper for me, um, you know, in, in our sites in WordPress and from a security standpoint, I think we're pretty tight, but we don't have a lot of the a lot of the posts uh, that some companies might have just because of what we do. But, you know, one of the companies that I researched when I was looking for a hosting site for, for the Waka site was um, uh, for security purposes. And again, I'm, uh, Patricia, you may um, have more uh, in-depth knowledge about that, but I, I chose a company called Bluehost and they offer a lot of uh, platform security uh, versus just an open source. So there might be other ways to help handle the security issues more economically. Uh, than going to this, uh, than using this particular company that once once you're in, they seem to have you over a barrel, so to speak. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's something worth pursuing anyways and investigating. Yeah, don't get, don't get me wrong. I love WordPress. I, I really do. I love WordPress. Um, I, I created a lot of sites in WordPress because people always thought that, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be doing, I'll be doing all the changes to my own site. Um, then they wouldn't or else they'd mess up the entire site and then I'd have to redo it. So I always put that mm -hmm. in the contract. If you mess up the site, I'm not going to redo it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have had sites that just, whether it's the update of the template or what have you that have just crashed and fixing them have been, is, has been a nightmare. Um, but I do love WordPress. WordPress is great. is great for changes, easy changes. Um, did, does, the, does the coding cold fusion ring a bell to anybody? Did they mention yeah, cold fusion? I've, I've heard of that. They didn't mention that, did they? Uh, the the, the Quinnipiac folks? Uh, no, I don't think. The no, kids, no, no. Uh, the uh, the um, the uh, our, our our company, our internet mm -hmm. company, our, our I, website. I, I, company. It's, not a, it's not a conversation I was engaged with. Now. Oh, okay. And, and Quinn and I met directly with uh, uh, you know with the company, and they, they didn't. I mean, they, they probably know better than to talk computer language with me because I don't want to say what the oh. hell they're talking about. So. <laughs> I was just, I was just curious. And they, they used to use that years ago. I don't know if they're still using that, but yeah, that would be more complicated. Tim, you can have confidence that you have more knowledge in computers than I do. So feel good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't know how to use them. I just don't know how to program them, I guess. But, uh, but I, I, I want it, I want the community to know that I've, I've heard what you're saying. I will take it to heart. Um, and uh, if there are future changes that are not hopefully not as time sensitive as these changes are, then we can, we can certainly engage in, in maybe some other options. Yeah. Do you need, do you need to vote on this $3,000 expenditure? I don't think so. I think by, you know, just we'll put it in the minutes and by approving the minutes, we've approved it, but okay. um, unless you, yeah, you know, why don't we do that Mark since it's three grand, you know, just want to make one quick. We know that all of the changes are all done and everything. We're not going to have to do any later on. Everything's all set, and that's the three thousand, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get another thousand dollar bill. Oh, we forgot this. Yeah. No, what so we did we is, is what we did is we signed a a not to exceed uh, for three grand. So I guess there's always a possibility to keep it a couple a little bit less, but um, it was a not to exceed number given all the okay. changes that we had laid out. And Callum and Samantha were part of the. Um, session that we had uh you know with them to talk about the changes and you know move this here move that there so it was lynn myself callum and samantha along with web solutions okay 
Okay, I, uh, I'll look for a motion then to accept this expenditure. I make a motion to accept the expenditure. Yeah, I'll second. I'm second, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No one's opposed. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Hey, Mark, just for continuity, why don't we vote on the uh, pipeline, the $500 pipeline sponsorship as well, please? I think we did, didn't we? We did. We yeah. did. Vote on? Okay. Yeah, I, I motioned to accept. To, uh, okay. To All right. Rob, Rob. Write it down. And I think Rob right. seconded. That's all I've got. Um, uh, our next meeting with EDC is the first, right? Is it Monday the first? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, uh, how far along are we going to bring the commission up to what we are right now? And we're pretty far along. So. Yeah, I think I think by the time the first comes around, we're going to have we're going to have launched all of these channels with the exception of, uh, I mean, if we get the website done by then, it'd be nice if it was up. Um, but I think we're gonna be, we're actively, you know, pursuing, we're gonna launch, we're gonna launch Facebook, LinkedIn, um, already done the college initiative. Um, Instagram, correct? Well, Instagram, I don't know, cause I've kind of put that on the back burner, you heard me apologize to John, but we will have, you know, more of an, more of an email presence which is not a new channel because we use it now, which is, it's about frequency. Um, but I think we're going to be up and running on, on most of all these channels. Okay. Instagram sure. gets a lot of exposure and that's a younger generation too. Yeah. yeah. And does, do they use Instagram instead of Facebook? Is that it? Because I think Facebook is yeah. old. My kids don't use Facebook at well, all. They think that's Too many old people on Facebook now? Yeah, it's yeah. All old, yeah, it's old people's stuff. Okay. That's okay. In about three years, the uh, they'll be Eight, year, eight seven year olds going on to some new site and they'll think that the uh, 17 year olds are too old yeah. oh they think the phone they think using the phone is uh, really uncool I'll tell you the truth yeah well yeah. <laughs> I was hearing for a rude awakening I know yeah. I, I said to my son I said why don't you just call him like, we don't do that we you know we just message each other I'm like well that's a big mistake but anyways <laughs> yeah. so you know I, I will just share with you briefly that is, is part of the um, uh, the uh, um, justification reports that I've had each of the uh, students do. Uh, John Meehan, he is an Instagram uh, guru. He, he is, uh, he's got over a million followers on his Instagram account. So, you know, we've uh, held off on him just because, again, I couldn't juggle all these things. But once we get him going, I think, you know, he understands it and he's, he's going to run, he'll run hard. So um, a million followers is extremely hard to do. Yeah. That's why we don't want to let go. Yeah. We definitely want him to do an Instagram page for us. To be, I, I, out of those million, how many people actually, they must have a thousand other people they follow. I just don't understand the whole. What um, it is, it can be a money maker. Of, it can oh, be I understand money it's a money maker for her. I just, I, for them, I, I, I know numbers count. They get money for each of the, for each of the, uh, as they grow their list. I've just always been enamored by all of these list collect name collectors i think most of these places are and i but it is what it is not going to listen mm -hmm. to me um question uh, tim does it make sense at all even remotely to have these kids during the meeting at all come in for a five minute uh presentation each maybe and, and spend 20 minutes of the meeting just to um expose the general committee to uh edc uh, members to who is behind a lot of this? Does that make sense, or it, 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 you think that's just a waste of time? I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'd like I mean, to get it as part of the town council at some point too. Yeah. I, there you go. Okay. Let me go back to my original question. Then is we should bring the commission up to what we've discussed so far. Um, that's going to take some time. So I think Joe should be aware. Joe's going to run the meeting. I'm assuming. So Joe should be aware of that to allow more time for the entire meeting. Cause I, I could see marketing taking up a good half hour of the meeting by just having this discussion without any students involved. And you know, there's going to be questions from the other committee members. Sure Didn't there are. Sure. Yeah. And, input, and input, which is what we're looking for. And you know, right. all those types of things. So, um, and my suggestion also is at the same time, if you can get the mayor to sit in on the meeting, I think that's a great time to bring him up to date, even further up to date. We've already that's talked a great idea, Mark. on a one-to-one, -one, but I wouldn't bring the students in on this meeting. Um, I, I would just, because I think it'll get really clunky and I think that we're gonna, at this date, and, and they're very impressive, don't get me wrong, but we're not here to sell the system to, to everybody. It's mm -hmm. to 
bring everybody up to date knowledgeable wise, you know? So, and, and to your point, it would be good to vet the other members' questions, concerns, issues, and address, address those prior to bringing these kids on. Right, right. Good point. My, my thought is that, you know, one, let's get rolling. So I, I agree with what you're saying, Mark, but before the students uh, become to a, a EDC meeting, uh, we may have to space them out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but let's, let's have some success stories that they can share. So, yeah. you know, we, we've got this activity or that activity, or, I mean, something where they can say it's working as opposed to right now, it's in mo most people's minds, it's conceptual. Yeah. It's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's, I think successes are, are part of what they should deliver. Couldn't agree with you more. Good so, point. so I could leave it with you that you'll talk with Joe then to give ourselves a little bit more time for that meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It, I, I'm assuming that the meeting will be remote again, continue to be remote in February. Yep. Okay. Good. So, um, is there anything else to come before this committee or thoughts? Well, I appreciate um, the the time that the committee has given. Um, you know, t Tim is doing an unbelievable job, the professor and the students bringing us up to this point, but there's an awful lot of time that's being given by this commission, uh, the subcommittee. And uh, I just wanna let you know that I appreciate that. You all have valuable time that you're doing a whole lot of other things too. Um, so, but I appreciate the time that you're giving on this because it's, it's always a good hour and a half or more um, beyond. So thank you. And any, any questions or comments before I adjourn? It, 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 it's just fascinating. You guys have done a great job, uh, you and Tim, everybody, but certainly you and Tim are kind of leading this and what a great job. It's fascinating. Fascinating. Good stuff. Teamwork. I'm looking forward to the results. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. It's going to work too. I know it is. Well, thank you. I'm meeting, a, meeting adjourned then. Very good. Okay. All right, Take thanks, care, everyone. Have a great, Have a great day, guys. Take care.